What makes a good flag design? In this short video, the New Zealand Designers Institute have outlined five principles of design and how they can be applied to flags. These five principles are simplicity, colour, the rule of thirds, symmetry and asymmetry, and context. The first is simplicity. Flag design is an exercise in simplicity. The composition of basic elements in a defined field, a reduced colour palette, and no language. The process should be reductive. It's as much about what's not included as what is. A great example is the Japanese flag, a white rectangle with a red circle representing the sun, an important symbol in Japanese culture. The design is also cognizant of its end use, because when it's flying, it puts the sun in the sky and reads the same from either side. The flag of Greenland was redesigned in 1985 and is elegantly simple. It echoes the landscape showing ice, ocean and a sun setting below the horizon. Both of these flags take meaningful symbolism to its purest form. The next principle is colour, arguably the most evocative element in design. Colour literally alters how we see the world. For example, on a cultural level, yellow signifies divinity in many religions. On an emotional level, yellow makes us happy. Many European flags develop their colours from historic traditions and upheavals of the last three centuries. In the Australian Aboriginal flag, the colours are symbolic, representing the sun, the earth and the people. When combining colours, separate light with dark to create contrast. A flag should also work in grayscale. The most successful national flags use two or three colours. More than four can be hard to distinguish. There are exceptions to this rule. For example, the South African flag uses black, green and yellow of the African National Congress, plus red, white and blue from the Dutch tricolour and the British Union flag. The rule of thirds divides a medium into thirds, creating aesthetic positions for primary elements. The result is nine equal parts created by pairs of horizontal and vertical lines. Core elements sit on the lines or their intersections to create more tension and energy than simply centering them. It's a useful rule of thumb when you're composing. However, if a strong primary element appears imbalanced, a centre design may work best. The rule of thirds can also apply to mass. Many flags divide space in this way, both vertically and horizontally. Symmetry is the most basic and enduring aspect of beauty, conveying balance, harmony and stability in natural and man-made forms. Simple symmetrical forms create recognition and recall. Most flags use reflective symmetry either vertically, horizontally or both. Asymmetry creates tension and prevents objects from appearing static. It evokes modernism, forcefulness, vitality and movement. The dynamic Seychelles flag, like the Sydney Opera House, is completely asymmetrical. Asymmetry is a common feature on colonial flags that follow the Canton pattern, like the Cook Islands flag. Other flags, such as the Nordic cross flags, employ symmetry horizontally and asymmetry vertically. Finally, context. Flags are seen in many different cultural contexts. At sporting events, by the military, on public buildings, with other flags, in ceremonies and online. They are constantly redrawn and reinterpreted. They must be read easily from a distance or when small. They're often seen together, so a flag must look like a flag, not a pictogram. Most flags adhere to one of these patterns, which reflect historic, traditional and religious themes. Suggesting an alternative flag for New Zealand is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Remember, for your design to be considered, it must be uploaded by July 16, 2015. Read the flag design guidelines and suggest your alternative flag design at flag.govt.nz. Thank you.